you are a professional or a businessman. Do you desire to earn a dollar and euros or pounds? It's all about taking your business to the world. Does it look like a daunting tax? You deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global. Do you know that there is a science behind making the product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable way? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled Use to Go Global. A scientifically proven, tested, and trusted template for building a successful and sustainable export business. To order, call 080 Today, again, to talk about this book, Built to Go Global. The book Built to Go Global is a very important book for all entrepreneurs and aspiring business people, particularly those who are going for retirement that would like to do entrepreneurship or produce products that they would like to sell in the national market. So, today I'm coming to talk to you on the 30 reasons why you need a book. Build to go global as an entrepreneur. If you are looking for market to sell your product abroad, then you will love this book, Build to Go Global. You will find it difficult to get buyers abroad, then you will love this book, Build to Go Global. <laughs> if you like a book full of stories, about to drive on the point rather of the message that is being passed across in the book, then you will like this book. Build to go global because the book is full of stories and case studies. If you are looking for why many business people drop out of export business, then you will love this book. Then you will love this book. If you want to build a successful business in export, then you will love this book. If you want to build a sustainable export business, then you will love this book. If you want to know if you are ready for the export market, because the challenge of readiness is a big deal in export business, then you will love this book. If you want to know if you are ready, that's examining yourself to know if your business and yourself is ready for a small market, then you will love this book. What are you still waiting for? Grab your copy now. Avoid dropping out of export business, then you, love, you need to get a copy of this. If you are looking for how to get a partner abroad to support your export business, then you need to get a copy of this. If you are looking for a export market with high demand for your product, then you need to get a copy of this. If you want to know the challenges of doing business abroad and how to avoid them, then you will love this. If you are looking for a template to follow to minimize your error rate in export business, then you will love this book. If you are looking for how to know your customers, we call them the CW of customers in the export market, how to know your customers or consumers in the export market, then you will love this book. If you are looking for how to boost your capacity to meet export market demand, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you are looking for how to mitigate payment risk, then you need to get a copy of this book. That's payment risk in export business. You need to get a copy of this book. If you want to know why business owners, the promoters, fail in export business, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you want your product to be found in big stores like Tesco, like Tilbury, like Walmart, in markets around the world, then you will love this book. What are you still waiting for? Grab your copy now. Are you an account?
account officer, relationship manager, or marketer in a bank? Are you struggling to meet your income and deposit targets? Are you at the edge of losing your job for the performance? You desire a change for the better in your career. Then register for the Certified Global Trade Management Professionals from the American Institute of Extended Studies to acquire skills needed to solve import export trade customers' problems and consequently attract the deposit and income of the transaction to your bank. Registration is currently ongoing. Call this number to register today. Are you all right? Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining tonight. We are moving on in our conversation on exploring potential of Nigerian uh, states. And today we are back in the Southeast and we are discussing Anambra State. That's uh, Governor Soludo's uh, domain. If you are yet to get the book Beauty Go Global, the book is still selling, very much available and can be delivered to you without any extra cost uh, of courier. Um, like I've said several ladies, um, the book that basically show you the reason why export business fail and how to avoid those issues that export business face, particularly in a developing country like Nigeria. Exploring the potential of Nigerian states and we are looking at Anambra. If you are yet to subscribe to our YouTube channel, please subscribe. Voice of African Trade, subscribe, like the notification, click on the notification bell, share the video, comment. If you have friends that are from Anambra State, today is their day. <laughs> if you have friends from Anambra State, today is their day. Today is their day in the sense that we are discussing the kind of conversation they should be having, the kind of thing they should be discussing, uh, or question they should be asking Governor Soludo in terms of how to generate income for the state. I have maintained that um, trade, international trade, particularly on the export side, can help to solve three of the 17 sustainable development goals. Go one, go two, and go 10. No hunger, reduce poverty, and reduce inequality. That is very possible. And I strongly believe that trade can be an instrument to make that a reality. I strongly believe that international trade can be an instrument that can help make that a reality. Why trade? Because of the opportunities available in trade. Because of the opportunities available in trade, particularly for exports, the fact that it can create jobs. So we're going to Anambra State today. Anambra has a lot of potentials. I mean, a lot of manufacturing going on there. And uh, if you are looking at this, um, having access to this video after today, please join our YouTube channel so you will know when we upload the video online. If you also want, if you are joining for the first time, maybe someone sent the link to you and you really want to have access to this link every Thursday by 5 p.m., kindly join our Telegram channel. You want to have access to this every Thursday by 5 p.m., kindly join our Telegram channel. The Telegram channel provides you opportunity to be able to have the link every Thursday to be dropped on your laps through this channel. You can have the link drop on your lap through this channel. And of course, you can easily join us afterwards. So I'll be dropping the link now. Uh, might be a little issue being able to drop the link. Okay, I think she go now. Okay, so I'm having a little issue dropping the link. I'm hoping I'll be able to. You can also copy the link down. I mean, the link is just down on the chat there. We've done Abia. We've been to Adamawa. We've gone to Aqua Ibom. Today, we are off to Anambra State. We are back in the South, and we are off to Anambra State. We'll go on a short break. When we come back, then we get started. Are you a professional or a businessman? 
Dear desires of any donors, heroes of homes, if it sounds like taking your business to the world, does it look like a daunting tax? If you deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global, do you know that there is a science behind making the product of service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled Pivot to Go Global. A scientifically proven, tested, and trusted template for building a successful and sustainable export business. To order, call 080-912-44449. All right. So, as usual, I have seven items to talk about. Preamble, basically talking about the need for Anambra State to export. Then I will talk about peculiarity of Anambra State, just basically talking about the people, the local government, the location and the like. Then the depth profile of the state, the unemployment rate in the state, the income of the state, the IGR of the state. Then we move on to, poten to potential. What are the things that the states have that have export market? Then we talk about the Purchasers, who are the people that can buy all over the world? And what is the size of the market like? Who are the people that can buy all over the world? And what is the size of the market for this product? What is the size of the market for this product? And then proposal. I have proposal every week. I will choose a product that can be found in the state. I make my own good submission on what I think the state can do to leverage on that product and be able to achieve some uh, good income. And I call it export driven income generation and export driven job creation. So we can have job export driven income generation and export driven job creation. We just need our governors. So think a little bit outside the box. You know, the governor of uh, Cross River did a lot in this regard, but the way it was designed is not the, most of the factory built are not designed to grow SME export. They are designed to have um, this glory of the state producing, but without much impact in the economy. Because I mean, is the people that own it that get the money, and uh, maybe some few farmers. But I have a, a model that I've worked in other clients that I feel we can adopt to be able to maximize the opportunities in Anambra State. And I'm talking about that today as usual. I do this every week. If you have been with me, you have an idea of what I'm talking about. We just adapt it for Anambra State. This is the logo of Anambra State. These are the local government in the state. The state is currently under a big siege with um, unknown government. Some people call it unknown no man. It's a big challenge. I was in Enugu sometimes, was it early this year or late last year? And it was, I mean, it was, it was a challenge really. People have to come in early to the hotel to be able to attend the program because of the Monday, uh, not going out, paralyzing the economy of the Southeastern state. So preamble, why should an Anambra state export to avoid over dependence on federal allocation? And you're going to see the dependence level of an Anambra state today on federal allocation to avoid over dependence on federal allocation. There are some states in Nigeria, if you remove the shock absorber of federal allocation, those states cannot exist. Those states cannot exist. If you remove the federal allocation, those states cannot exist. And it's so sad, sincerely. It's so sad because, you know, I, I said this, I've been saying this every week that the worst that can happen to a state is for the state governor to sleep from beginning of the month to the end of the month, do nothing, 
but you will get money to pay salary at the end of the month without doing anything. Because some people are doing the job and they are sharing the money. It just makes the governor lazy. I strongly believe if there is no federal allocation and governor need to think and do a lot of work to generate income, maybe we'll have less unserious and incompetent people ruling our state, maybe. But because there is money, so even if the governor is not adding, he doesn't know anything, he can't add any value, do you know what? The governor will pay, will pay salary and he will be praised. No, just imagine, he will be praised for paying salary. They say, ah, after all, it's not always salary. I see he's doing a favor for paying people money due to them for the job they've done. You know? But that's our country for you. That's our country for you. That's the structure the military has left with us. And we are still with it. Hoping that it will change. It can help boost the state, GDP of the state. Export has the capacity to create opportunity for SME to grow. And I will talk a lot about this towards the end, like I often do. But now, from the perspective of an Anambra state, it makes the state's businesses to depend less on the domestic market. So that even when there is a recession in the domestic market, there are opportunities outside to latch onto. The state is able to earn export proceed and grow revenue. Export proceed and grow revenue. Export proceed and grow revenue. The state can generate revenue by exporting. It makes farming to become more lucrative. It helps the state to gain global market share and recognition as the volume grows. The state, because of the competition, the state can become home of creativity and innovation because the businesses are going to begin to become to become innovative, to compete in the national market because you're going to see what other people are doing. It can make the state to be, it can become industrial star catalyst for the state. Export create job for youth because of increased market and more capacity businesses have to build to meet those demand. The state is able to know their competitive advantage in the export market. The state can lead the way for other states in Nigeria to follow. This makes the state to be independent of federal allocation. And I'll show you how much the state can make from export and become independent of federal allocation. There are numerous incentives that can be enjoyed by the state the business in the state, rather. Esper can help Anambra to maximize the, the, the indigents abroad. I talked about this on a radio program yesterday, how we can leverage on the presence of our friends and relatives abroad to create a export market and grow export business. The state also True export can kill the lease of state depending on wasting oil assets like oil. Export can help to revive the economy of the state. Export is capable of slowing down rural urban migration. There are tasks and opportunity for the exporter in the state to enjoy. It helps the business to utilize their idle capacity. A state I said in Jigawa State, they say that state is not viable. I'm looking forward to the day I will review Jigawa State. There's no state that's not viable in Nigeria. We just have governors that are not viable. The governors that are not productive. No state, no state. As long as human beings are dead, no state can be discovered non viable. There's land, <laughs> there's rain, there's human beings. And say the state is not viable. That's not true. We just have leaders that are not really doing their job, actually. Export is a tool for wealth creation for the state. The state can end directly from it. An Ambra state can end directly from exportation. It helps the state also to extract the product 
and uh, founded their state, production of the product founded their state. The people can aim for more improvement because of competition in the export market, and they can zero in on their area of strength as far as export business is concerned. So what do you see in Anambra? What do you see in Anambra? What are the things you see in Anambra state? Do you see unemployment in Anambra state? Of course there are unemployment. I'm not disputing that fact. What do you see in Anambra state? Do you see poverty in Anambra state? Of course there are poverty, and I'm not denying that fact. What do you see in Anambra state? You see frustration? Of course there are frustration in Anambra state. Now, but I choose to see opportunities in farming in an Anambra state, opportunities in mining, and opportunities in the population of this state. Let's go on a short break. When we come back, we begin to talk more about the peculiarity of an Anambra state. Are you an account officer, relationship manager, or marketing in a bank? Are you struggling to meet your income and deposit targets? Are you at the verge of losing your job with your performance? You desire a change for the better in your career. Then register for the Certified Global Trade Management Professional from the American Institute of Extended Studies to acquire skills needed to solve import export trade customers' problems and consequently attract the deposit and income of the transaction to your bank. Registration is currently ongoing. Call this number to register today. All right. Are you? Peculiarities of Anambra State. Anambra State was created in 1976. From the then East Central State by the regime of General Mutala Mohammed, and the capital was in Enugu. The further state creation exercised by the regime of Obangida on 27th of August developed Anambra State again into Anambra and then Enugu. Well, Enugu has always been the capital, even when it was Anambra State, before Enugu was cashed out. The capital of the present state, of course, is Oka, bounded by Delta, Edo, Imo, River to the south, Enugu to the east, Fogi to the north, Anambra State derived its name from River Anambra, which transverse the state. Of course, the state has male local government. This is rich in oil. Gas, bauxite, ceramic, all, and almost 100% of arable soil. Most of its natural resources likely remain on top. Oh, oh. This is a very industrial state. And most of the industrial base of the state is private sector driven, funding from agri to automobile to manufacturing, and which is situated mainly in Newi industrial belt. Onitsha market is reputed as the biggest market in West Africa. It is nicknamed land of the beauty, land of beauty. Most densely populated in Nigeria and has a large market right there in Onitsha. Total land size, 4,865 kilometers square. Capital in Oka, half 21 local government with a population of about 5.8 million people. It's located in tropical rainforest region, major crop being oil palm, rice, citrus, fruits, citrus fruit maize, cassava, um, solid mineral being lignite, kaolin, limestone, lead ore, gypsum. <clears throat> and this state have four agricultural zone, orca zone, Anambra zone, Aguata zone, and Onicha zone. Opportunities in Anambra include agribusiness, auto parts, light manufacturing, healthcare, tourism, energy, and mining. <clears throat> the state has a competitive advantage, being the largest market in, uh, <clears throat> in Africa. 
home to Onisha River, natural gas and crude oil, up to 10 trillion cubic feet of untapped gas, international airport, key logistics all for other states, home of Newell automobile cluster, second most densely populated state, one of the highest GDP per capita in Nigeria, low, <coughs> low, low crime rate. <coughs> Can we say that of this state now? This was in 2018 by the by uh, NIPC. Can we say that now? No, low crime rate, I don't think so. It's really terrible in Anambra right now. Now, IGR, $26.4 billion. Budget in 2020, 137. <laughs> Let's check on <coughs> unemployment level. <coughs> Unemployment level in the state. Unemployment level in the state. Unemployment level in the state is 951,000. Almost a million people are unemployed. Total unemployed. Almost a million people are unemployed in this state. Remember, the state is just about 6 million people, so you can understand what percentage you are looking at there. Almost a million people are unemployed in Anambra State. The GDP is 75% services, 8% industry, and 17% are Greek. Let's move to the profile of the state. The debt profile, the last governor has not done that state well at all. Peter Obi has always claimed he left a lot of money in the profile of the state. <coughs> that means eight years ago, the state was in positive. <clears throat> but today, I think Zoludo said he met about 300 million in the account. <clears throat> With almost <coughs> with several debt profile. Look at the state. The state owed domestic debt about 60 billion. <coughs> about 60 billion. <coughs> and, uh, and foreign debt of about 110 billion, <coughs> which is under 60 <coughs> billion naira. <coughs> So sorry. <clears throat> Oil and 10 million foreign debt, <clears throat> which is under 60 billion, 60 billion naira. 60 billion plus that's over about 120 or over 120 billion. You will notice the IGR of the state has been growing. But a very slow pace is currently at 28.01 as of 2020. I want to see the federal allocation of the state. Can you see the federal allocation of the state? It's actually at about 54 billion as of 2020. So when you look at this state, when you look at this state, I want to look at the percentage of the federal allocation and idea. This state cannot survive without federal allocation. Federal allocation is actually 28. Federal allocation is actually 28. Percent, sorry, 28. Federal allocation is actually 54 percent, and the um, federal allocation is actually 65 percent, and the IGR of the state is 34 percent. 34 percent. The state is spending a lot on um, capital and expenditure, which is commendable, 63%. But this state cannot survive without federal allocation. And so sad. I mean, this is very sad about a state like Anambra State. Very, very sad. The state is practically living on handout. The state cannot pay its bills and meet up with its budget if it depends only on, <clears throat> on its own idea. That's why I said a number of state governments in Nigeria without doing anything, and I mean without doing jack, you know jack. <laughs> without doing jack. Without doing any goddamn thing. The state can. The state can 
make money. Can you imagine that? How can a state able to make money <clears throat> without doing anything? Because there is federal allocation from Abuja. According to budget, an Ambra said he marked third in 2021 physical performance ranking, down one position from the second position in 2020, <clears throat> being the second best performer in the Southeast. Historically, a low debt state. But the state saw a year on year surge in domestic debt. Um, I guess he was talking about when Peter Obi was there, but he saw in domestic debt in the state. <clears throat> but the state still have one of the lowest <clears throat> debts, domestic debt, ranking number 24. So there's a lot of states in Nigeria owing so much. The state IGR is low compared to its production and its. Economic potential. In 2020, its IGR per capita stood at 4.5, which is slightly less than the country I, uh, average IGR. <clears throat> now, despite a slowdown in IGR, the state was one of the five states that prioritized investment in capital infrastructure, which is commendable. And that's why you see that also in the, uh, in the spending of the state. A lot, of, a lot of money went into infrastructure. A lot of money went into infrastructure. So sorry for the break in transmission. I had an issue with my network. I'm back now. Kindly confirm if you can hear me. Kindly confirm if you can hear me. Kindly drop a message in the chat if you can hear me, please. Can you hear me, please? <clears throat> Hello, can you hear me? All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So Anambra State had five small, uh, one of the five smallest operating expenses for running state government among the 36 states in the country. Despite an overall decent physical performance in 2020, Anambra State still need to take critical measures to improve is resilient by boosting foreign trade in the state. I like that. This is budget talking. Boosting foreign trade in the state. The state can boost foreign trade. The state can boost foreign trade. We'll go on a short break. When we come back, you know what we'll be looking at? The potential opportunities for export in Anambra State. See you after the break. Are you an account officer, relationship manager, or marketer in a bank? Are you struggling to meet your income and deposit targets? Are you at the verge of losing your job without performance? Do you desire a change for the better in your career? Then register for the Certified Global Trade Management Professional from the American Institute of Extended Studies to acquire skills needed to serve import export trade customers properly and consequently attract the deposit and income of the transaction to your bank. Registration is currently ongoing. Call this number to register today. Are you All right? What are the potential of this thing? What does the state have to offer? Offer, like I said earlier. Is rich in natural gas, crude oil, bauxite, ceramic. He said aim to become top three producer of rice, cassava, and maize in 2017. For this time, the government increased its 2017 budget allocation to agriculture by 500% to $5.4 billion, a billion naira. With most of Anambra's agricultural arable land, and the state has a put some potential to produce crops such as vegetable rice, cassava, in a commercial quantity. In addition, the presence of mineral resources such as iron ore, limestone, natural gas, and coal provide a wide range of possibilities for backward integration. The state has the economic hub Nnewi Onicha and Oka, Nnewi and Onicha are known for their large industrial and commercial operation. Anambra State is the second smallest state in the country by landmass. 
That's why you have the high population density. We less than 300,000 hectares of land available for cultivation. However, the state success inch on strategic approach to agree. Investors in the state include Kostarish, Joseph Agro, Dell Farms, Across Rice, Tomato, Mud Plant, Integrated Farm Project, Rice Production, in our 16 was meant to be 230,000 metric tons. In an umbrella state, this state mainly produce oil palm, rice, citrus fruit, maize, cassava, kaolin, lead, or iron or gypsum. The state initiated the agricultural regulation initiated by the Korean administration led to the establishment of an agricultural export program resulting in the first vegetable export in 2016. Now, this vegetable export has been questioned and queried. Customs said they can't see where it passed. They can't see where that $5 million of vegetable passed. And, you know, when Obi Obi not celebrated this thing, a lot of questions were being asked. Even quarantine, they don't know where it passed. That's not my major discussion here, but I don't think we should be doing propaganda. I mean, let's export and generate income and not just be interested in how much we are talking about in terms of what was sold, but rather we should focus more on uh, developing creative for the state. Now let's move on to discuss, let's move on to discuss the purchasers. So who are those that can purchase the item of this state? The first product I will show you is rice. The state is doing a lot with rice, Look at the market for rice, $24.7 billion. $24.7 billion. A number of states can produce and export rice and get a share of this huge market. You can see how much people are buying it in Asia. Even in Africa, United States and Italy, let's look at Africa. Do you know a quarter, one third, sorry, a quarter, 25% of the total export rice in the world are purchased by Africa? Out of the $24 billion rice market in the world, Africa is consuming 60%. <laughs> But Africa is not up to a third, a, a quarter of the world population. World population is about less, almost 8 billion people now. So a quarter will be two. But Africa is about 1.3 billion. But Africa is eating more rice. <laughs> when you look at the ratio, Africa is eating a lot of rice. So rice in Africa is a huge market. And I'm glad that Nigeria is not on this list because we have stopped import of rice, largely. Majority of rice coming to Nigeria now coming to Benin. Can you see Benin as small as Benin is? Benin is smaller than South Africa. Benin is smaller than Egypt. It's smaller than Ethiopia. But Benin consume more rice. Of course, you know that majority of the 12.6% of rice going to Benin are coming to Nigeria. Dry vegetable. This can be produced in an Anambra state. $4.26 billion market. Who are the people buying? China, India, Germany, United States, Egypt, Netherlands, Poland. $4.26 billion. What is the market share of Africa? The Africa is not buying a lot of vegetable. Africa is just about $100 million of the vegetable market. Cassava stash, $1.69 billion from China to Indonesia, to Chinese, to United States, to Malaysia, to Japan. These are major importers in the world. Africa is doing very little in that market in terms of demand. Africa is only doing as low as 11.4, 11.4. Then 1.11 billion of corn starch. Apart from cassava starch, even corn starch demand is $1.11 billion. Germany, France, China, Turkey, United States, India are major buyers. And Africa is not playing so well in that market, just 38 million of that one point something billion. 
Egypt, South Africa, being a major buyer in Africa. The elephants in the room, palm oil. The Southeast can do a lot with palm oil. In all our analysis on the income they can generate, we actually use palm oil. $29.3 billion in palm oil market. And Africa is doing a lot in that. Because out of that, out of that 26, 29 billion, almost 30 billion, Africa is doing about $4 billion in palm oil import. Who are the major markets in the world? India, China, Pakistan, Netherlands, Russia, Germany, Spain, Italy, Belgium, Poland, Egypt, Tanzania, South Africa, Ghana, Benin Republic. Even Nigeria imports palm oil, even though we have what it takes to produce. Look at the market in Africa, 4.28 billion. That speaks to just one thing, the humongous opportunity available in the African market. The humongous opportunity available in the African market. We'll now move on now to my proposal to Anambra State. What should we be telling our government? Governor Soludo in Anambra State. Let's go on a short break. When we come back, we discuss the proposal. Are you an account officer, relationship manager, or marketing in a bank? Are you struggling to meet your income and deposit targets? Are you at the verge of losing your job with your performance? Do you desire a change for the better in your career? Then register for the Certified Global Trade Management Professional from the American Institute of Extended Studies to acquire skills needed to solve import export trade customers' problems and consequently attract the deposit and income of the transaction to your bank. Registration is currently ongoing. Call this number to register today. All right, I have two proposals. One is for the way I think we should run industrialization and agro processing in Nigeria to enable inclusion, an inclusive system that will help SME to grow. You know, we talk a lot about SME is the engine room of the economy. SME contribute a very huge volume of the, in the economy. SME do this, SME do that, SME create job in the economy. But when we want to take decision, most of the time, SME is not really in the plan. Look at this model. When SME operate in all the assets of the chain, particularly when it's the same SME, or even when we have more than one type of SME, Handling production, harvesting and transport, primary processing and storage, secondary processing and packaging, marketing and sale, logistics and export is a very inefficient chain. Very inefficient value chain operator. It creates low processing capacity and low output because you don't have money. Few jobs are created, low cap quality and packaging because they can't even attain some standard expected. High cost of production because they can't do, they can't achieve economy of scale, non-competitive product in the export market. Now, now, my recommendation and proposal is that can a state just decide that look, we will take a product in this state that is has a lot of raw materials in the state, a product that have a lot more material in the state. And we will partner with a private sector to develop a big, gigantic, and humongous processing plant. That processing plant is going to be very big, but it's not for profit. It's only generating enough to pay salary and maintain the equipment. SMEC remain in the farm, supported to grow more volume and but the, the, the SME2 now is the one that is buying from SME1. SME2 take the raw material to the large processing facility. The large processing facility, we process, we package, and deliver to SME2. 
SME to only do marketing and selling and export. Let me tell you what this will do. It will empower the farmers and give them more demand and expand their business. It will help create more business on SME2 to be able to focus more on market development and sales rather than processing and packaging so they can export. Then the large corporate take up the headache of Sun, the headache of NAVDAG, the headache of hazard analysis and, and critical control point certification, has solved the headache of, uh, of uh, ISO certification and the economy of scale is achieved. What this does basically is that the processing is left to a big company to do. You know, I saw this model for the first time in UK, Leicester. And I was shocked. SME just bring their raw materials. In two weeks, they'll come and pick finished product already packaged, only to go and sell in the market. Can you imagine that? This factory produced for several SME. The factory operates 24 hours because there is demand for SME. Demand. So farming is growing, job is being created, and market, export market is being developed. This creates an efficient value chain operator, high processing capacity and out, high output, good quality and packaging, low cost of production and competitive product in the export market, Increase job creation, decrease inequality, and decrease insecurity. Decrease inequality and decrease insecurity. Decrease inequality and decrease insecurity. You know why I'm emphasizing that? Insecurity is a fallout of joblessness. Insecurity is a fallout of joblessness. If the people are engaged, they will not get involved in most of the things they get involved in because they won't even have the time in the first place to get involved in that kind of thing. They won't even have the time in the first place because they are busy. The impact of this model the impact of this model for state government go beyond creating uh, income revenue generation, it has a more impact on employment generation. It has a impact on employment generation. An increased economic activity An increased economic activity. This, in my opinion, is a more effective, efficient, and enduring model for diversifying the economy of any state in the country. This model can also be replicated by federal government at the federal level, particularly for the exportation of solid minerals. Particularly for the exportation of solid minerals. Let's look at the last set, uh, segment. How can the state directly make profit from exporting? How can the state directly make money from exporting directly? We are using palm oil again. We have made a number of assumptions. And please note, the assumptions we have made are based on the research done by agronomists. So they are subject to a little modification here and there, but it just creates a um, review to us what is possible. It is assumed that the state is able to use about 50% of the arable land, that's about 93,000 hectares, to cultivate palm, 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 palm fruits. The agronomist told us it's 18 metric ton yield per hectare. That means if we cultivate this, we can generate 1.6 million tons of palm fruit. If we process this, agronomists told us that it's about 90% yield. If we process to palm oil, we can generate 318 metric tons of palm oil. Cost of farming of this large land mass is about 1.91 billion. The state government is not giving farmer to farm. They give farmer guarantee 
that they will buy the palm fruit or the palm oil from them, having trained them on how to produce the quality that will be exported. The cost of processing is about 9.54 billion plus the cost of farming. Then the cost of export is about 12 billion. Total cost of process of farming, processing, and export is about $24 billion. This is what the state government will have to pay back to the farmers plus some profit on top. Let's go back to the state. If we sell that palm oil at $500 per metric ton, we can generate about, 50, about $159 million at exchange rate of 360, which is much more today, is about 57 billion naira. The budget of the state in 2019 was 127 billion. Look at this. This state can make profit even at 360. Imagine if you now sold a parallel market of 52.39 billion naira. 52.39 billion naira. Basically just showing in simple terms the model a state can adopt to generate income for itself. How will this work? The state will partner with a business that can coordinate this activity. The state provide fund to support the special purpose vehicle. The special purpose vehicle form farmers into cooperative in different parts of the state. The special purpose vehicle issue purchase order to farmer to buy the palm oil from them. This company that the state government have 85% stake or 80% stake provide training and input and support to farmers. Also provide collection center for the palm fruit or the palm oil. Clean and process the palm oil if necessary, if, it's, if they are providing palm fruit. Source for buyers, do documentation and shipment, present document to buyer, get paid, and the state government take its own share, having paid the farmer off, pay the processor off, pay the partner off, the state have enough to be used for development within the state. In order to support exporter in your state, to enter export market in Africa, Europe, and America in a secure and sustainable way, the state government can do the following, partner with representative at export destination, set up warehouse at destination, set up entity at destination, like agent and distributor, partner with independent agent and distributor at destination, organize and sponsor manufacturer for exhibition in the export market. And the state will be able to significantly, significantly generate income for itself, not just through taxes, but through actual export of the product that can be found in the state. Are you a professional or a businessman? Do you desire to earn a dollar and euros or pounds? Have you told your tip for your business to the world? Does it look like a daunting tax? Do you deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global? Do you know that there is a science behind making your product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled Pips to Go Global. It's scientifically proven, tested, and trusted templates for building a successful and sustainable export business. To order, call 080 All right. Are you so today we have looked at Anambra State. Next week, we'll go back to the north. We'll be discussing Bauchi State, then by Elsa, then Benue, then Bono. And this will continue till the end of the year and to sometime early next year, where we'll be discussing Zamfara State. Remember, if you're just joining us for the first time, you want to get the book that shows why export business fail and it's tied to build to go global. It can be delivered to you anywhere in the country at no extra cost for Korea. If you want to have access to this video and share with your friends who are in Anambra State or from Anambra State, then you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Voice of African Trade, like, share, comment, and remember to drop 
I mean, to click on the notification bell and remember to drop your comment. If you want to get this link every week, remember to join our Telegram channel. If you search for um, African Export Business Development, if you search for African Export Business Development on Telegram, you find us on Telegram, you can join and you'll be able to get access to this link every week. And you will be able to join for wherever you are around the world. Are you a professional or a businessman? Do you desire to earn a dollar and euros or pounds? Have you thought of taking your business to the world? Does it look like a daunting tax? Do you deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global? Do you know that there is a science behind making your product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled Views to Go Global. It's scientifically proven, tested, and trusted templates for building a successful and sustainable export business. To order, call 080 If you want to build a global brand, then you love this book. <laughs> if you want to generate foreign exchange, maybe as an importer or as an exporter, because a number of importers and exporters are having a big challenge right now, particularly in Africa, in Nigeria in particular. If you want to generate foreign exchange to fund your import business, then you love this book. If you are looking for a checklist to validate your readiness for export business, then you love this book. If you are looking for how to effectively price your product in a competitive manner, then you love this book. If you want to know the area of capacity building that your business needs to be able to do export business successfully, then you love this book. If you want to know the signs and symptoms of a business that is not export ready, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you want to enjoy the government incentive as far as export business is concerned, then you need to get this book. If you want to gain market share in market abroad for your product, then you will love this book. If you want to know the benefit of selling your product abroad, then you will love this book. If you are thinking of exporting after retirement, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you want to learn why some businesses fail in export business, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you want to know the reason for high mortality rates in export business, particularly in developing countries, then you need to get a copy of this book. What are you still waiting for? Grab your copy now. Are you an account officer, relationship manager, or marketer in a bank? Are you struggling to meet your income and deposit targets? Are you at the verge of losing your job with your performance? Do you desire a change for the better in your career? Then register for the Certified Global Trade Management Professional from the American Institute of Extended Studies to acquire skills needed to solve import export trade customers' problems and consequently attract the deposit and income of the transaction to your bank. Registration is currently ongoing. Call this number to register today. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. And see you next week. Have you a wonderful weekend and bye-bye.